AFC West buy sell hold. Let's hit it with. Uh, we'll start with. We'll start with Russell Wilson, since I think you know. I think the Broncos' <laughs> offense is going to be a potential breakout offense here, an offense that you're going to want to own parts and pieces of, unless you're Big D. He doesn't want Sutton. We know the answer would be sell Sutton. Uh, but uh, let's go around the room. Are we we buy sell holding Russell Wilson? I'm on the holder side of buying. Holder side of buying. All mm-hmm. right. How about uh, how about you, Austin? I agree with Matt. Uh, not necessarily <laughs> one. I mean, you cannot sell. Like nobody's going to pay anything for him, right? So that's off mm-hmm. off the table. Holding kind of feels right because I think he's an appre. It's weird to say. I actually think Russ is an appreciating asset. Like when you look at his current price, um, and buying. I mean, it just feels gross buying. I, but I agree with Matt. I would probably prefer to hold over buy. I'm on the holding side of sell. So I'm holding them till I can sell them is, is my yeah. opinion. I think if you're selling, like you guys said, I think you, you hold um, and until you, I think you're going to see decent fantasy points kind of right off the rip here. I think Russell's going to have something to prove. Sean Payton's going to have them boys where they need to be uh, by week two, week three. I think Russell's going to be a sell. If you're, if you're a buyer, I think you got to buy now, uh, which I think there would be certain situations where I'd be fine with buying because I think, you know, I think there is appreciation to this asset looking through it through the seller lens and the buyer lens. If you're going to buy, buy now, if you're going to sell, uh, wait a minute. So how about uh, Russell Wilson or Geno Smith? Big D. You don't have to ask me, bro. <laughs> Geno Smith all day. And, and it's Hawks not because I'm a Hawks, Hawks fan. It, it's because of the weapons. I just believe in that with that offense is in Seattle. And I just I don't believe in Russell, Russell Wilson and, and how they're going to, especially with you, you guys talked about it, three injuries at the wide receiver already. Javante's already banged up. I, I just I have a feeling that if they start slow in that first quarter of the season, the first four or five games, it's going to be really hard for them to climb out of that just from a stigma perspective perspective so yeah so for for me it's for me it's gino how about you austin this is the first part of the pod where we're going to disagree i think it's russ super confidently and they say that because gino has been with all due respect atrocious his entire career until this past season and i think you can argue it's because of the supporting cast and yes the supporting cast did just get better in seattle it took it took gino 17 games to barely hit 30 touchdown passes and barely hit 4,000 passing yards, which are good marks. Mm -hmm. It's just everything broke right for Gino this past season. This is like Russ's floor. Like like Russ every single season, at least for not only fantasy purposes, but like he's been great for NFL purposes. Like dude's got a ring, been to multiple Super Bowls, and he's been a very solid quarterback. I'm not saying he's a Hall of Famer, but like I don't think he's terribly far off from the conversation. I don't – I don't – he probably won't go in, um, but I think there are some people out there that I will actually argue in favor of Russ. I, I don't, I, dude. It's like it's the recency bias that's so crazy because if you took away this past season, I mean, the whole world consensus, everybody was all in on Russ for eternity, sure. right? Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I feel you very know Smith QB QB eight last year. Crazy, crazy. I never saw that coming. I don't think anybody well, did. Yeah, I don't think anybody did either. Uh, you weren't even sure if, if it was going to be if it was going to be Gino or Locke, Locke coming in. So, <laughs> no. um, how about hey, you, Matt? Gino, like I'm happy for Gino. That's awesome. Yeah. You know? Short yeah. answer is I'm taking Russ. I feel like with like with Austin said, he's appreciating asset. Um, what is Gene? We're talking about Gino supporting cast. What does it look like come next year when um, DK can move on? Lock Lock somebody year older. So, yeah. All right, but JSN and that line getting better. Two two For rookie sure. tackles last year never happens. Uh, that that was. Uh, I think it's close. I think I'm. I think I'm going Russ there. Uh, but Gino does have a little there. I forget what the rushing yard total was, but it was a lot higher than I thought. He kind of gets a little bit of hidden yardage uh, rushing. Um, so, but I, I'll I'll stick with Russ there. How about how about Russ or Kenny Pickett? And I'll start with. Um, let's go. Let's go Austin because I don't I think you might be a Pickett hater. Yeah, I'm low on Pickett. Uh, I know he's looked like a Hall of Famer in this. Ooh, pre- this year's yeah. Danny Dimes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> geez, man, we're talking redraft this upcoming. No, no, season, no, no. Right? Dynasty, Dynasty. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you can oh, give me both. Yeah, <laughs> gotta go pick it just based off of age alone, right? Like, yeah. What's the worst case scenario? Uh, Pickett doesn't really pan out, and like Ross may have a few more 
decent seasons in him, right? Like Ross doesn't have a whole lot of value. Uh, Pickett has a chance to have a lot of value. That's the type of risk. That, see, like in this situation, I, I'm, I'm probably almost always going to lead the younger asset, right? Especially because we're talking like a 10 year age or no, not 10. What is it? Maybe I like think it is. 30, I think yeah, Ross is 34, 30, 30, 34, 35. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, you're proving my point. Thank you. So that, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I would lean, uh, Kenny Pickett very confidently there. How about redraft then? See, like that's a much better question. Uh, well, f- fuck you then. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man, when I think about their rushing upside, it's got to be like kind of similar. I almost think Kenny Pickett might be more m- mobile at this point. I feel like Russ is kind of, I don't know if he's deteriorating or he's not running necessarily as much. Um, man, I'd pr- I think I probably still lean Kenny Pickett. All right. How about Matt? Matt, Kenny Pickett with Dynasty, Kenny Pickett or Russ? Pickett. Right. Not even not even a conversation. Big D? Same. Yeah. All right. So then no need to go up to Jared Goff. Everybody's feeling oh, golf Goff over, is golf over, over Pickett. So it's definitely right. golf over Wilson for me. How about uh Jordan Love or oh. Russell Wilson? I'll start with Big D because I already know what the answer is. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, I'd probably go Jordan Love. Just, I mean, wow. Austin kind, of, kind of talked about it. Uh, you know, from a dynasty perspective, youth wise, who who knows what his ceiling can be? Um, I, I, guys, I just honestly think I know that Russ has been perennial, uh, wonderful, but and and he came in the best shape of his life. But uh, I'm, you know, I I don't know. I think he's got an Aaron Rodgers season from last year in him, maybe, you know, like mm. as a ceiling, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at from, from Russ's perspective. So I'm, I'm yeah. Seahawks, Seahawks sucked all the good out of him. And now, now the Seahawks lovers are hating on Russell, turn their backs on their guy. Yeah. Well, I, I think part of it is just the way that they used him in, in the franchise, right? The way that the franchise uses that quarterback, just like how Dallas uses a, you know, they always seem to have great tight ends because of how they, no matter who the offensive coordinator is in there, they just seem to have some, some kind of scheme and peach cobbler there. He's, he's, um, you know, he, he just, I don't know. He, he's a defensive dude, but he, he's got his marks on the offense, no matter who the offensive quarter, coordinator is. And I think Russ is um, – I think one thing I will say, the one upside I will say is if Russ has a little bit more uh, mobility than he than he has shown, and, and maybe that's why I'm so so low on him because he, he had that kind of hook – that hook string, like, you know, he, nobody mm-hmm. could touch him for so long. Um, and he just hasn't had the mobility, uh, to, to, to go outside of the pocket and he's, and I don't want to bring up the, the, the height thing, but I'm gonna, uh, you know, I, I think when he has to go inside that pocket, it's just, it's tough for him. Uh, when, when you have the kind of wide receivers that you have, um, and, and I think that's why the, the, the tight end is targeted so much because of the down downfield presence. So, hmm. so I just, I, I feel like if, if he's coming in better shape, Sean Payton is a master with Drew Brees and, and how to how to manage a, a quarterback that has some height uh, deficiencies. So I, I do think there's some upside there. But for me, yeah, it's it's still opposite side there. All right. Real quick. Uh, Austin, Jordan Love or uh, Russell Wilson? I have Jordan Love as QB 17 in my dynasty rankings. I have Ross at 21. All right. Like well, love and some love. Matthew. I'm Either gonna Penn State, so I'm gonna dissent. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Russell because I think that you can sell him. You're gonna be able to sell him week four, week five, and get a pretty good haul for him. All right, fair enough. Um, let's go. Uh, we'll switch to the running back here. Let's go, Javante Williams. Uh, buy, sell, hold, Javante Williams. Uh, Big D. I, th- I think I'm holding them. I, I, where I have them, I'm not really, really w- wanting to sell them, and and where I don't have them, not really wanting to buy them at this point. So, um, I think that I, I think that if his injury would have lingered a little bit more, there would be a bigger window. But, um, uh, you know, I think because he's been practicing, he's not on the pup. I think that the, it's a little harder to get him. So, anyway, that that's me. I, I'm I'm a hold. So you log on to Twitter, and it seems like Javante Williams is going to just be a locked in top 10 running back and <laughs> i wish i could believe that i i wish i could i don't think it's going to happen i really really don't um to tell you the truth like i'm not even a uh, javante hater 
I don't think he's going to be top 15 this year. I, I just – I don't believe what I'm reading. I think his injury is still going to affect him a lot. I mean, you look at, like, these recent running backs that are hurt the first year back from their ACL, like J.K. Dobbins, just miserable first year back. Um, Cam Akers, first year back, just miserable. And, and I'm not saying it's the same exact situation, the same exact injury. I don't think he's going to – I think the results are going to be close, though. Mm-hmm. Um, so I lean more of hold – but I'm, I'm man, I'm praying, I'm praying that he could put together a few quality games, and then I would be looking to sell. Uh, I, I'd be, I'd be, I'm nervous to buy. I'm very nervous to buy Javante. Yeah, like I'd rather 24 first over Javante. I feel confident about that. Yeah, Matt, I'm still buying. I think he can. I think he can put together if he puts together a half, a half decent season that he could be in the ETN conversation come next year's startup season. Yeah. All right, let's go quick. Uh, quick hitters here. Uh, Javante or Damian Pierce? Matt, I'll start with you. Stop. Come on. No, it's, I'm, no, it's still Javante. You're not going to justify that. All right, how about, nope. how about, I don't how need about to. Uh, Austin, what do you got? It's Javante. Okay. Uh, Big D? Javante. All right. How about you, yeah, Casey? Fuck you, Casey. He's taking Pierce. Um, I, I, no, I'll, 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 I'll still, I'll still give Javante the benefit of the doubt here, but it's close. Um, Pierce, Pierce, or uh, Dobbins or Javante. Man, this is a good one. Um, anybody else got a quick answer? Javante. Javante. Just not, not believing in the Dobbins. Or are you uh, scaring you off a little? Not, not necessarily not believing. I just think the offense is changing. So I, I, I'm. I think it's Javante for me just because of the the way things are setting up, the way the offense looks in the Broncos, the way the offense looks in the Ravens. I, I think I would take Javante, the running back position in Denver over the running back position in Baltimore. I'm going to take Javante by a hair. By a okay. hair. By a hair. Austin? It's Javante. Dobbins has 25 receptions in 23 games. I think Javante opened up with like 10 or 11 receptions. I also just think Javante is, is a player that I – much more content with at this point. I have Javante at 17. I have Dobbins at 19 in my rankings. So it's, it's close. Yeah. All right. Last one real quick, rapid fire for, for the running backs. Then we'll go to a receiver to uh, Mixon or Javante dynasty. Javante for me. Is it Javante all the way around the room? Javante yeah. over Mixon. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's move over to a wide receiver real quick. We'll get a, get a receiver or two in and then we'll get out of here. Um, let's go. Quentin Johnston. Buy, sell, hold. I feel like he's got to be a buy, man. Um, I mean, the quarterback, the draft cap. I mean, who doesn't love a young rookie receiver with great size paired up with Justin Herbert for the foreseeable future, right? Like, what about that doesn't make you want to buy it? Unless you necessarily don't like the prospect. I guess I could understand that, right? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I'm I'm buying. uh, Big D? Yeah, I'm buying. Everybody, Everybody buying? No. Okay. Why? Right. Why are you buying? I'm uh, probably. Big D? I'm pr- oh, okay. Why am I buying? I, yeah, I, it seemed like you had a little more there. No, I was just gonna say. I, I I think that you know, again, just the structure, the way the offense is, and and the way that Keenan Allen is is great, but he's not gonna be around forever. And I I just I don't know. There's enough there for. And and to be honest, like looking at the rookie drafts, his his price hasn't really changed since anything's happened. And so so for me, price wise, he seems seems justifiable to take it. Yeah, uh, Matt, I'm holding. I, I can't get around to buying it because I don't like the pro. I wasn't in love yeah. with the prospect. So um, if he's he hasn't fallen to me, into my lap into any rookie drafts yet, but um, I wasn't actively going after him either I, he was at the end of that that run i mean it's close to me and tight end premium whether i'm taking kincaid or johnston so and i'm probably yeah. leaving kincaid at this point so yeah I'm, I'm i'm i'd be in the buy camp um let's let's throw him up a couple against a couple guys real quick we'll go Pittman since i know that's your boy matt Pittman. Pittman. uh austin Pittman or quentin johnston uh michael Pittman jr Everybody's going Pittman, MPJ. Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't see that coming. How about how about Christian Watson? He's a he's an intriguing one for me. Um, Big D. Uh, Johnson. Johnson for me too. Austin. Uh, Christian Watson or, or Quentin, Quentin Johnson. Johnson. 
Yeah. So this is really close for me. I have I'm really starting to get hot on Watson. I have Watson as Ooh, my receiver. Like hear that. I have him as my receiver 24 in Dynasty. Quinton Johnston, Quinton Johnston, I have as receiver 27. It's it's close. I can make a good good case for both. Matthew? I'm giving it to Watson by a hair, but you can convince me either way there. Mm, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm going Quentin um, with that one, but I, I could regret that. Um, everybody, anybody going Traylon over Quentin? No. Ooh. I got Traylon two slots ahead, man. I'm so high on Traylon. Me too. I, I, I like look like a fool, and I just can't wait. Oh, I don't even. Get, it's a bummer he got hurt, but I'm all in on Traylon, so I, I, I'd, I'd sell for Traylon. I have Traylon at 25, one slot lower than Watson. I just, I can't quit the talent, man. I loved him as mm. a prospect. I think he, I just, I man, if he doesn't hit, I'm done playing Dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Big D? <laughs> yeah, same. I, I, or sorry, I'm, I'm on Burks on that one. All right. Really? Yeah. I'm on Johnson on that one. Yeah. I've got him uh, almost a tier and a half ahead. Oh, nice. So. Nice. All right. Um, let's let's do a quick one here. Mims or Rashi Rice? Rice. But I preferred Mims's, but I preferred, sorry, I preferred Mims in the draft, in the scouting Rookie draft. process. In yeah. The process. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, man. I have Mims way ahead of Rashi Rice. I am Woo! high. Very high on Marvin Mims. How about uh, how about Big D? What you got, Mims or Rice? Yeah, man, M- Mims. I, it, it, in me, it's not the talent. It's it because I feel like they're very not exactly similar, but they're they're comparable enough where I just look at the system and I, I just don't believe I want to take a chance on a lamp in KC in the wide receiver room. So, yeah. All right. I think you got to lean Mims right now for sure, uh, but Rice is really close there for me. Uh, I, it's it's been Rice the whole time for me, um, but you know the, the injury to Judy could could open the door a little bit for Mims to 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 get his foot in the door there. But um, boy, that's close. I, I'm I'm still sticking with my guy Rice. Fuck it. Uh, so all right, one more and we'll get out of here since we we Kadarius Tony. I feel like we're doing the West. Let's get a little <laughs> Kadarius Tony talk in here. Uh, Kadarius, Tony, or Bateman? Matt, I know you're a Bateman guy. At least you were. I'm going to stick with Bateman. I just okay. trust him somehow more than Tony. How about uh, how about you, Austin? Yeah, so I have Rashad Bateman as my wide receiver 40. I have um, Kadarius, Tony as wide receiver 51. It, you know, it stinks because – I mentioned before, is there a player that you can trust less, less. than less than Tony? And it's like, man, uh, he's up there. He's in the conversation. Bateman's got to be getting there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But, man, I, I just – I cannot forget about the prospects that both of these players are. And Rashad Bateman blows him out of the water. I, I can't quit Bateman. He's one of those players I can't quit. He, I promise you, man, he is the dart throw that you want to take here mm-hmm. in this situation. He's just – he's a good player. He's a good football player, and it stinks that he's been injured. But when he was on the field, like, he actually looked good, right? He, yeah. he looked like a legit NFL wide receiver. Yeah, um, my answer would be – I that about Tony. I, I don't think I've ever – Oh, you bite oh. your tongue. Dude. You bite your tongue. <laughs> oh. What does he have? Like uh, Tony, Tony just move, just looks moves different out there. That's really that's what you're. He that's does. What he's you're, a hybrid. I don't even know what he looks like. He's just a better athlete than everybody on the field. I agree with you on that. Yeah, uh, sure. Big D. Uh, I I have Bateman a tier higher. He's my forty two uh, yeah. on this last rank that I did. So I and Tony's down forty seven. I think forty eight somewhere in there. So I mean it's not too far, but but Bateman definitely for me. Um, and and again, it's just I'm I'm not in on Kansas City wide receivers. I'm I'm more in on the Ravens offense. So yeah, I think I think if Kadarius would have came into this whole off season healthy and wouldn't have had the scare, I would be going Kadarius, Kadarius, Kadarius here. Uh, and I still it's still pretty close, but I, I guess I can I guess I can concede the leaning Bateman here uh, a little bit. But they're both starting to be in the same kind of camp. Uh, can't really can't really trust them. How about Elijah Moore to wrap this thing up? Anybody uh, not taking Elijah Moore here? Mm, a lot I'm, of silence. So I'm, a, I'm more over Tony. More over Tony. Yeah, but I'm Bateman over Moore. Okay. 
How about how about you, Austin? Elijah Moore, yep. For, I have him at 47, Tony at 51. And uh, I, I feel very good about that. Definitely would rather Elijah Moore. Moore or Bateman? Um, I would I would prefer Rashad Bateman. He's I have him way too high in my rankings. I recognize that. I I I like Rashad Bateman. I think he's a good player. Hey, Not you, too high, brother. It's your rankings. You can have yeah, whatever you, can. you want. <laughs> yeah. He's too high. I'm telling you, he's too high. <laughs> Matt, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Moore as well. Moore as well. All right. More I, I, mean, I think I would go there too. Um, Dulcich or Chig? That's a good question. I think mm. I'm Chig. Mm. Getting Chiggy with it. All right. Getting Chiggy with it. Chig. Getting a little Traylon injury in this end. Scotty and uh, yeah, Scotty, uh, Kyle <laughs> Phillips. They're they're down. You know, two two receivers. Chig gonna get out there, get a little little, get something rolling. Matt, what are you thinking? Uh, like you're a big Dulcich guy, so I, I can't believe I just sold Dulcich. Dulcich actually. Really? I sold Dulcich in a, in a trade earlier this year. It was to get Sanders, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Dulcich. Okay. Who you got, uh, Austin, to wrap this up? Actually, so I have them back-to-back, but I have Dulcich a tier above. I have him as my tight end 13. Chig at tight end 14. I like Start, Chig start the next tier. Dulcich is in one. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. I liked what I saw out of him, man. I think he's a good player. Chig or Dulcich? Uh, Dul- Dul- oh, honestly, both, but I was referring to Dulcich. Yeah. Yeah. And I was big on Oconco last year when he coming out of the mm. rookie process as well, too. So they're mm. both, they were both great late stabs last year in the rookie draft. So yep. I think. If once Traylon comes back, I think it's going to be a little harder for Chig to be, you know, super duper reliable but i think like the 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 big highlighty plays are going to be way more fun from from chig because it's just going to be like god damn he's a fucking monster and they were there last year yeah but how do you um, put him in the starting lineup is, right dulcich is probably going to be a little bit more reliable at least you know for i think a longer chunk of the season so um i'd say kind of both on that one too if i could but i've been moving both i had both i got a lot both kind of late later in a lot of drafts last year and i've moved uh probably you know some some chig and some dulcich um so yeah man all right well anybody got anything else before we get out of here jason's saying do josh jacobs but i'm we're, we, we can get the hell out of here it's late <laughs> anything else bueller bueller no bueller? I, I, i'm good i mean i i think i think we covered it man i i i think my money would be on the chargers for the division just as the dark horse um it's because i think I, I don't know what the odds are at but i'm, I'm guessing they're pretty decent because of how how strong the chiefs are but give uh, me chiefs are minus 165 chargers plus 340 all day yeah that that'd be that's a, that's a fun little bet sprinkle 50 100 on that one no doubt Oh man, it's about to be gambling season. I'm fucking fired up. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, so anyway, we we appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll be back soon. I'm actually, I don't know if I'll be. I think I got one more show to record, and then I'm. I'm Tuesday is my uh, is is the day that that is. Uh, You're hard out. I'm a, I'm a hard out on Tuesday, and I'll probably be out for for a week, uh, and we'll hopefully be bringing a healthy little baby girl into the world uh some point some point tuesday afternoon um so uh you might not see me for a while so you guys i think have a have a couple shows lined up so somebody somebody gets to somebody gets to give out the what is good and i don't know how i feel about it i don't like to relinquish that no last time last time you weren't on this on the on the pod fucking i asked jay wayne to do and he told me he wanted to do it fucking Mm. prick what a, what a he son of a bitch. This, he gets to do the what is good and the and the piece and the and the exit and the exit and fucking oh, Rick. you could do the exit tonight matt like i think you could rochambeau him for it <laughs> <laughs> i go first <laughs> yeah all right guys we appreciate you and we'll catch you next time peace peace